linguistics. So I got some comments on my 2017 in review video where I talked about what happened on this soul channel in 2017 and what I plan to do here in 2018. And some of the things that you guys mentioned were videos that I already wanted to make. So I thought I would address a couple of the things that you brought up in a two part series because the topics are related. So this video is going to be the first of two videos that I'm going to do about a fairly similar subject. So today I wanted to talk about why foreign people often think that European Portuguese sounds like a Slavic language, like it was Russian or Ukrainian or Polish or something like that. Now, Portuguese itself is a Romance language. That means it is descended from Latin. Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, etc. are Slavic languages. They stem from a common Slavic ancestor, often called Old Church Slavonic, among other things. So you can see that the languages themselves are not particularly closely related. When we talk about linguistics, languages can be related based on where they came from, and so we can think of languages as being part of a big family or not. If you wanted to look at it that way, you would have languages like Portuguese and Spanish and Catalan and French and Italian as sister languages, those languages being distant cousins to other languages in their own immediate families, like German and English and Dutch, which are Germanic, and Russian, Ukrainian, and Polish as Slavic languages. So just like people, any similarities between distant cousins are going to be fairly superficial at best. There's not going to be an easy or immediate reason why one language might at first glance seem similar to another. But there are a few reasons why foreigners might think that European Portuguese sounds vaguely Slavic. The biggest reason for this has to do with phonetics or the sounds that the language itself makes. European Portuguese has a few sounds that are the most typical or most characteristic, especially when you want to contrast it with Brazilian Portuguese. One of the first of those sounds comes from the way that Portuguese reduces its vowels. What that means is that the vowels shift when they're not stressed. It's why we say rato instead of rato. It's also why we say de instead of de. There are in numerous other examples of reduction in Portuguese vowels, but the one that I want to focus on is the one that we just heard. That U uh sound is very characteristic of European Portuguese. The reduction of an E, E, or E sound in Portuguese to an U uh sound is in sharp contrast to Brazilian Portuguese, which generally reduces them to an E sound. This U uh sound is somewhere in the middle of the original E or E sounds, which puts it further away from the original sound than Brazilian Portuguese might. The next sound that's strongly characteristic of European Portuguese is what is called in Portuguese the S chiado. What that means is that S at the end of words or before consonants makes a sh sound. So we say ratus and not ratus in European Portuguese. That makes that sh sound pop up in a lot more places in European Portuguese than it would in Brazilian Portuguese. The last sound that I want to talk about as being characteristic of European Portuguese comes from the European Portuguese tendency to velarize its sounds. What that means is that European Portuguese likes to make its sounds closer to the back of the mouth than the front. That's in contrast with Brazilian Portuguese, which does not velarize so heavily. And the best way to hear this difference is to hear the difference between a European and a Brazilian might say the letter L. In Europe, it's a hard velar L sound. It's in the back of the mouth like L, whereas in Brazil, they reduce it to a W sound or a light L. The European L sound is very reminiscent of the way that Catalan pronounces L, and it's very similar to the way we might say L in feel in English. You can hear that heavy L sound. But you might be wondering and asking yourself what all of this has to do with Slavic. Why do people think that Portuguese sounds like Russian? The answer lies in the way that Russian and other Slavic languages handle those same kinds kind of sounds. So for those of you who don't already know, when I was an undergrad in college, one of my majors was Russian. That's right, I studied Russian language and culture in college way before I ever thought about Portuguese. And although today I might not say that I speak Russian particularly well, I do know it in detail enough that I can tell you about some of the characteristics of it that compare and contrast with Portuguese. I will be doing a video about the languages that I speak coming up soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, let's continue on with why Portuguese seemingly sounds like Russian. Slavic languages like Russian, Ukrainian, and others often are characterized by an abundance of consonant sounds, especially fricative sounds, or sounds that require friction to make them. I'm talking about sounds like sh or f, where the sound can continue on as long as you have breath to make it. And in the case of sh, there's a lot of sh going on in Slavic languages. It's one of the most emblematic sounds of many Slavic languages. So when we think about the s 
chado and the way that you hear a lot of sh in European Portuguese, we can pair that with the existence of a lot of sh sounds in Russian and other Slavic languages. But many Slavic languages also have a sound that's very similar to the reduced Portuguese e sound. And in fact, it's an essential vowel in Russian. In order to say many of the pronouns, you have to say the e vowel, which is very similar if not the same vowel as e, depending on how you're pronouncing it. In Russian, that results in essential words like me, vi, ti, and so on. It's easy to hear the similarities between a European Portuguese e and a Slavic e sound. The only difference in pronunciation between them is really on which end of the e or e spectrum that the sound is falling on, since the sound is roughly in between both of those vowels. So if you pair those similarities with the sh sounds, you start to get an idea for why people are hearing similarities between the languages. But it doesn't stop there. When we go back to the hard Portuguese l sound, we can also think about the way that Russian handles its l sounds. In Russian, there exists the concept of hard consonants and soft consonants. Hard consonants are more velarized and soft consonants are palatalized. And what that means is that hard consonants are pronounced a little bit further back in the mouth and soft consonants are softened by the palate in the front of your mouth. What I'm talking about is that little ridge that you can feel in the front of your mouth. So you have a difference between l and l. In the case of Russian and other Slavic languages, that l is fairly similar to the way that European Portuguese treats its l's. So if you combine all of those different sounds, there are enough similarities to make a foreigner think that European Portuguese has a lot of Slavic sounding sounds. But there's just one last element to it that trips up the untrained ear. In linguistics, we have the concept of prosody. What that is, is the musicality or the rhythm of a language. It's how it treats stress and how the sounds go up and down or not at all. In the case of Portuguese, there is a big difference between the prosody of European Portuguese and the prosody of Brazilian Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese is famous for being more sing-songy. That means that it goes up and down more often, changing its pitch in the middle of a sentence. This is in contrast to the way that European Portuguese is, where European Portuguese tends to meander its way in a relatively flat manner through its sentences, going more dramatically up or down only really at the end. As you might have been guessing, by now, Slavic languages tend to be a little bit more like European Portuguese in this regard. Often they have less of an up and down sing-songy kind of a rhythm to them, the way that languages like Spanish or Brazilian Portuguese tend to. So if you combine that musicality with the similar sounds between European Portuguese and Slavic languages, you start to get an idea of why foreign people often mistakenly think that European Portuguese is a Slavic language. That's all I've got for this video. Stay tuned for part two, where I talk about why my accent sounds the way it does in in Portuguese. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you learned something or otherwise found it interesting, give me a thumbs up down below. You might think about subscribing to my channel if you're not already. I make videos about food, culture, and indeed the Portuguese language on my channel, which you can find in playlists in the eye above, and I will see you next time.